Today on Tough Crack, a truck named Rambo gets physical with USA 1. Big 1-8 drive to the world title is steered in the wrong direction. And the equalizer is poised for another world championship. Superstars of monster truck racing will go side by side on one of the most famous dirt track racing facilities in the entire country. We're at Lebanon Valley Speedway. The promoter here, Howard Commander, is the promoter of the year in auto racing. It's a well-respected facility, and today it took on hours of rain. But thousands of fans are still packing in, and the track is going to be ready for side-by-side -side monster truck racing action. The big story before we even go racing today, though, is on one truck that's not here. The Grave Digger, who won a week ago on Tough Tracks, will not have a chance to make it two in a row. Army Armstrong's got that story. Well, thanks, Scott. As you know, normally this is the portion of the show where we interview the winner of last week's event. That's an impossibility. Last week's event on television was won by Dennis Anderson, the Grave Digger. However, since then, in a non-televised event, the truck was completely demolished. Now, Dennis Anderson's okay, but I'm standing with the man that was running him when the accident occurred. Andy Brass, the driver of Bigfoot, tell me what happened on that run in New York. Well, it got down to Dennis and I in the finals there, and both of us come off the line about right. We was running pretty well, even across there. I started to pull away, and by the time we got down to the finish line, I looked over and seen Dennis kind of heading off to the left, and I, I backed out of it and kind of watched him, and all he did was veer real hard to the left, hit the wall, bounced a few times down the wall, and just really just messed the truck up. They said the TNT official had to use the killer box, and that's what actually stopped the truck. Yeah, that's what it was. I think what happened, actually, I think Dennis thumped his head up on the on the roll bar inside the cab and kind of knocked him dizzy there for a little bit and he just stuffed into the wall. Well, Andy, everybody's waiting for the return of Bigfoot 8. You came out storming, both barrels smoking, but you're having all kind of problems. You have put a couple wins under your belt. Tell me what the problems were and how you got them ironed out. Well, a lot of problems we've been having with the truck is it's just been wanting to do right hands between the cars there. And every time we come off the cars, they pull the right hand turn. A lot of the problems, I think a lot of it was we're just trying to off the truck. I think we might have broke a locker in the truck and we're out here on a 10-day tour. It's kind of hard to get parts shipped in, flew out or, or whatever and get them all put in the truck. So we just been back now the truck a little bit, trying to drive, drive it easy, you know. We've been turning the fastest times of the night almost every place we go, but still, you know, it's just going to have to back out, take it easy and just try to bump the guys. Well, right now we're going to bump over to Chris Chapman. He talked about a 10-day tour. He's taking two wins on the tour. Chris Chapman's with the driver of USA 1. He's another truck that's taking two wins on this tour. Thanks, Army. Another truck that's won several events on this Fast and Furious New York tour is USA 1. Driver Steve Wilkie, how are you guys holding up under this pace? Oh, I don't know, Chris. Uh, we heard the truck the other day here, and uh, that was the first time, you know, in seven days that we've heard the truck. So, actually, we're holding up pretty well. Now, you have won several events. What does that make you feel like as a, as a driver out here, as a racer, competitor? Well, uh, confidence is always a good thing when you're driving a monster truck or driving any race vehicle. Uh, it, it gives you a lot of confidence. Uh, being a new driver now, I've been a, at it, you know, about a year, mostly indoors. But uh, when you go outdoors with our truck, uh, it's one of the fastest trucks in the country, I believe. And, uh, you know, in saying that, if I can drive it, it's going to win. Speaking of fast trucks, this is a very, very fast course that we're getting ready to race here tonight in West Lebanon. What do you think about it, the conditions? It's been raining here most of the day. Well, I need to correct you. It was a fast course, Chris. Uh, you know, we were looking at hitting the second stack uh, close to 60, 65, 70 miles an hour um, when we first pulled in this morning. And uh, we got a downpour here in the valley, and uh, now we're down 35, maybe 40 miles an hour, if that, and uh, there's going to be a lot of trucks out of shape. Let's go back now to Scott and Army. Thanks, Chris. A great perspective coming in, and you can see how much work has to be done on the track, but they'll have it ready to race. Equalizer comes in with the TMT Monster Truck Challenge. Points lead, but Big Foot 8 still very much in it. 32 points behind. Carolina Crusher is a solid third. Then the Auto Value King Crush. Ray Digger rounding out the top five, but again, Dennis Anderson's gear apparently is done. USA 1 is in the sixth spot. The Nightlife, Awesome Kong, hanging onto a top ten spot in eight. The Outlaw and Buffalo Tremor rounding out the top ten for the World Championship of Monster Truck Racing on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. 
Tough Tracks is brought to you by Z-Rex Antifreeze Coolant. No matter how cold it gets this winter, no matter where you drive, it pays to remember the temperature never drops below Z-Rex. Welcome back to Tough Tracks. Scott Douglas, Army Armstrong, and Chris Chapman in West Lebanon, New York. Lebanon Valley Speedway, where Howard Commander's track staff has got this track ready to race. And I'm going to tell you, they had to take several inches of mud off of this course. But Army, it looks like it's in pretty decent shape. Yeah, the track in real good shape, but there is still something that Howard Commander and his crew could not do. And that's to take a little bit of an angle, about a four degree up angle to the lane of the USA 1. What I'm telling you is the USA 1 truck is going to be trying to qualify and this shot against Ramble out of the high side of the track. His truck will have a tendency to go to the right. The Rambo truck will have a tendency to go to the left. I'm talking camera right, left. This could be an awesome qualifying shot. This is qualifying Rambo and USA 1. Okay, right there. USA 1 wants the cars, and that is exactly what Army was talking about, you know. Now, Steve Wilkie's going to have to get a penalty and re-qualify because he didn't stay on the car. Army, explain the rule at the end of the run here. Okay, the rule is that you, both front tires must touch with the jumper. Now, the right front tire did not touch. But this changes the whole complexity of this event for Wilkie because there's no way he's going to have lane joints, and that's going to be critical in winning this event tonight. Let's go over to Chris Chapman, who's with Steve Wilkie. Steve, during qualifications, it looked like USA 1's power was taking you straight into the sand. Oh, definitely, Chris. Uh, it's not a horsepower track tonight because of the rain. Uh, we, they dried the track out as best they could, uh, and I knew as soon as I went to high gear that, that my horsepower would take over. And, and once that happens, uh, the True Value Chevrolet just kind of come around on me. She went out from underneath me, and I had to pedal it and get back in it. Scary feeling? Well, when you're pointing it at the fans who pay the bills, yeah, it is. The man who has been coming on strong in the World Championship points races in front of you now, Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher Chevrolet out of Waynesboro, North Carolina. He'll qualify against a truck army that we saw do very well earlier in the year, the Pony Express. Well, the Pony Express really is a monster Mustang, one of the few ones on the circuit. Let's go back and talk about Porter. He's under pressure. He's got to get back to being consistent, to controlling his own destiny, and that's exactly what he did. A good qualifying run and a quick time shot. The time for Gary Porter is 8.66 fastest time so far in the qualification round. Look at the Pony Express. You can see he, like the USA 1 truck a few minutes ago, got disqualified for going out of the lane. Well, there's the truck they're talking about, Andy Brass and Big Foot number 8. You know, in the opening, I was talking to Andy, he kept saying the truck is making a right turn in the middle of the jump. Uh-oh, we could have a major problem here. If they don't have that problem solved, we've seen Rambo go against the USA 1 truck. USA 1 had the right turn problem. The Mustang comes out, he's got the right turn problem. Let's see what's going to happen with Bigfoot if they solve that problem. The and look who he's going against. Oh, you talk about a battle royal. Just qualifying with the Alabama King Crush. It's not hardly running at all. Bigfoot laying down his shot. Yeah, but Andy was really working up in that truck. If you'll notice, if we have a replay come up, I want you to watch the driver's hand. The truck was going straight, but oh, Andy, buddy, he was working. I'm going to tell you, Call of Duty King Crush has obviously got some problems and is just going to make a legal pass to get a qualification time. But Andy Brass and Bigfoot, an excellent time. But how about this? An 8.75, only second best. The Carolina Crusher, that old war horse, is continuing to hang in there. His time is faster than Bigfoot. Look at the replays that comes up. See, Andy, the truck really, from a camera angle, looked like it was going straight. But believe me, that rascal, was, he had a handful of Emmy shots. Absolutely. Andy Brass taking a beating in the Bigfoot truck. Scott, the King Crunch we saw during qualifications, not the King Crunch we're all used to seeing. Yeah, we were probably broke second gear in qualifying. And we ought to be able to get through the race, just go from first right into high. But it's going to have a little slow right in the middle just to get it going. But hopefully it'll come around. How difficult is that on the truck? Oh, it's real hard on it. It's going to be working. You know, gear ratio is going to be changing a whole lot from low to high. But and hopefully the track's going to be slick enough that it's not going to hurt nothing. Chris Chapman there with Scott Stevens of the Auto Value King Crunch. You're looking at Steve Wilkie. Now remember, he has to re-qualify because here on his qualifying attempt, he went off the cars. Watch him on the second stack. He did not get both of those front wheels up, and he did not keep at least two wheels over the car. Scott, one thing you must remember at this point, no matter how fast he goes, they're going to tag a penalty on him. So believe me, he is going to come at me a big time. Good straight run. But it still goes to the right at the end of the track, but out. 
outstanding run for Steve Wilkie and USA One. Look at this. His time would have been the fastest of the night. But because of the three-second penalty, he'll be back in the pack when we drop the qualifying bracket. Still, Steve Wilkie and USA One serving notice that he's going to be a handful as this night goes on at West Lebanon. Here's the way we'll match him up in the first round. Carolina Crusher taking on Dave White Dark Night Light. That equalizer and Pony Express square up. A rematch for that first qualifying run. Rambo and USA One. The outlaws here. He'll take on the Star Monster. And to round it out, you'll see competition with the Buffalo Trevor against King Crush and Bigfoot against Thunder Chicken. It's Conti. Back on tough track and ready for the first round of side-by-side -side competition on the TMP Monster Truck Challenge in West Lebanon, New York, Lebanon Valley Speedway. We're going to see the beautiful Chevrolet out of Nebraska. That's Dave Wysorek in nightlife taking on the old reliable Carolina Crusher and Jerry Porter from Waitsboro, North Carolina. This could be the battle of the cool heads in this sport. Cool heads going to prevail. Let's see what's going to happen. Now, remember, we will have fast losers coming back, so the Crusher may be back. But, Nightlife, put him away here, Army. Yeah, and Porter was in the lane that he wanted to be in. A big, big win for Dave Wysorek and the Nightlife Chevrolet. There, Dave, he's headed over to Army Armstrong. Man, he's got to be happy. Dave, tell me about the track conditions out there right now. Well, the track's a little slick off the line. I spun a whole lot. I should have probably cleaned my tires before I pulled up to it. But other than that, it's not too bad. My truck's looking up real good, and I'm getting some real good passes. The upset victim was Jerry Porter and the Carolina Crusher. He's with Chris Chapman. Jerry, you're in 859, Nightlife 849. Nightlife, he laid down, you know, a perfect pass. I was a little bit slower that run than I was in qualifying. I'm disappointed in it, and hopefully I'll come back as a faster loser. You think that time will hold up the way the track is? It seems to be getting faster. I think the, you know, the times will be getting faster and faster as the night goes long. You know, the track's drying out and everybody's learning the track and the times will be getting faster. Good luck to you. I will see you again next round. Okay, thank you. Again, you know, uh, they'll be taking two fast losers and Crutcher had a good shot. Equalizer coming out. This is, of course, the truck that won the world championship a year ago. The rookie driving to Greg Holbrook against Anthony Fortier and the Pony Express. Boy, Anthony is not a regular on the circuit. He picked one of the bad boys to go against. There is a difference in a monster truck that's built specifically for racing as compared to a show monster truck, Scott. And that just proved it right there. The Equalizer with an impressive run and a win over the Pony Express. Watching it again on the replay. Equalizer's on the right of your screen. Holbrook, nice and straight off the first set. And man, looking good over the second set. Greg, what's the track? Well, it looks slippery out there on the inside. Why'd you go to the inside lane? It looks wetter than the outside lane. The car's a lot better on the inside. I watched Gary Porter and Carolina Crusher run that time. While we had the intermission, they filled in some dirt in the holes in the first set of cars. This out over is just terrific tonight. Okay, I'm coming out now. We're going to have an interesting matchup. Is USA one after earlier being disqualified on a qualifying run had to come back, take a three-second penalty, which dropped him down in the field. He comes back against Rambo. Bill Weaver in Rambo was actually third fastest. Uh, Rambo is another vehicle that doesn't travel the whole circuit with us. We're glad to have him with us tonight. And he's showing he can muscle up and run with these guys. And Wilkie's trying to prove a point. Who's going to come out? Why do you believe it? Look at this run. Oh, they made contact at the end of the run. Let's see what, it, what Rambo's on two wheels. Now he gets all four back down. They actually collided at the end of the run. And I don't know who got the victory. Don't have to take this one to the photo finish tape. But Army, watch the end of the run as they collide. What you got to remember? Both trucks are trying to compensate, and they dive right into each other. Wow. USA 1 and Rambo making contact. Boy, I'll tell you, they came across the line together. There's Steve Wilkie. He's running around. He wants to see the timing tape, I'm sure. Yeah, he's running to the end of the track to check the finish line timing tape. He believes he won it. Well, he's waiting, and... Boy, well, he gets it. I think they told him he, he did win. Let's go down to Chris. He's over with Steve Wilkie. What's wrong? I'm just making sure I hit the cars. Um, again, uh, it's so slick out in the mid-range. I come out the first stack and she went to...
and it's over. But his left front is coming in. You see where he hit me with his left front tire. Uh, Everett's not going to be happy about that. But uh, two dollars Chevrolet. I'll tell you what. Uh, it's, uh, it's crazy out here. It's just too slick to be good for anybody. You all did come together. Could you tell? How did that happen? Yeah, it was my front tire. It hit me right in the driver door. There's no doubt about it. The crowd's chanting your name right now. We still, I don't think, have a decision on a winner. Can you tell? Again, we just put the camera on the truck, guys. Thank you. Two value Chevrolet. Stop back, everybody that puts them on. I'll tell you what. It's great, and I wouldn't be doing anything else in the world. Thank you. Now, you know, an interesting point here. The USA 1 team, to my knowledge, is the only team that ever complains about the track condition, saying it's not fast or whatever. These guys are going to have to learn that they're going to have to adjust to the track. You cannot make the track adjust to them. The other drivers have done it. Look at Rambo. He cuts them out of nowhere. He may have pulled the upset of the year. Listen. Boy, the crowd just chanting, USA won. They think he's won, but look, Army, I think Rambo got him on the replay. It's awful close. They're still checking. It looks just like Rambo, but they have not declared the official winner. Chris, what's going on? to take on Buffalo, New York, John Kwasniewski, and the Buffalo Tremor. Johnny K wants to do good. Hometown boy Scott Stevens says he's running with the wounded truck today, but right now he's hanging tough. Stevens on the far side. Yeah, Texas. Not everybody jumping to the right that's coming out of that lane, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, no question about it. You know, King Crunch, without a second gear, looks pretty good. Maybe they can just leave that gear at home from now on. Yeah, well, Scott, remember what he said in the earlier interview about first and third gear? Absolutely. Then have to worry about mid-range. He plants the horsepower. He goes from first to third, and he is hitting it hard. Scott, you said second gear was going away when we were talking to you on the race radio. 
this is not a horsepower track, you can still pull this thing off. Yeah, the truck worked real good. Turned a little more RPM than we really liked to, but everything went pretty good. You know, next round's around, we're really going to have to gear up for it. You know, we knew that Johnny K's truck was running good, but he was having a little trouble with that lane earlier. You know, next race with Bigfoot's the one we really got to, you know, worry about. Just got to do the best we can do. Thank you. Scott Stevens already talking about Bigfoot. Bigfoot's got a little business to take care of first, and that is putting away Kip Rarick and the Thunder Chicken, the chicken out of Catawissa, Pennsylvania, digging on Andy Brad from the big, bad Bigfoot number eight. Right for the right turn in the middle of the course. If it does not happen, they've got the problem solved. There it is. He's on the brakes. He's in trouble. He's got a problem. Thunder Chicken may put him away. Oh, God, do you believe that? Andy Brad all the court and Thunder Chicken has upset Bigfoot right here at Lebanon Valley Speedway. A stunning upset. It's almost like the truck has a mind all its own. It's going to go where it wants to go. Once it comes over the first set of cars, it's almost like it says, right turn, Clyde, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, Thunder Chicken will take it, but the sad thing about this is obviously the much superior truck is going to have to go on the trailer or just hope to get back in on a fast loser rule. Thunder Chicken didn't even make an especially good pass, but because Andy Brass can come nowhere close to controlling his truck, Thunder Chicken gets the victory. And, you know, sometimes this sport is more survival than going fast, and the kid did it there. Army is with our survivor. Kid, there's an old song out. If you're going to take a lick, and it'll be the Thunder Chicken. I think you can go back to Bigfoot people and start whistling that right now. Yeah, I think this is what you call one of those miracles. Uh, I, I heard my, my truck start stumbling, and I looked over, and Bigfoot wasn't doing what he's supposed to do. You know, now, you know, for your sake, you say it's a miracle, but you run hard every time you go out with these guys. You just might be due for a win right here. The truck ran good. I do my best. I'll just go round after round. Well, you're going to the next round, and he's going in the trailer. Thank you. Well, Kid Rarick, Thunder Chicken wins it. Chris Chapman is over with the guy who's got to be upset about the loss, Andy Brack. Andy, all you can say about a run like that is it just too wet and floppy out there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, this is a real sloppy track tonight. As you can see, uh, USA One and myself both, you know, some of the fastest trucks around here. We're not doing nothing out here. You know, it's just too much motor, too much wheel speed. You, you notice that the underdog trucks, the guys not running no horsepower, the big fleet of tires and stuff, they're doing a lot, of, lot better, you know, because they don't need a horsepower in the hole and uh, they don't have the horsepower between the cars. The more that we, we got the horsepower and the wheel speed, and it's just killing us. I saw you tried everything in the world to get that thing back under control and try it again. It's just like it's like being on ice out there, you know. You just step on a little bit and it just wants to pass you up and you just can't hardly correct it. You know, every time you do something, it's, you're kind of reacting what the truck's trying to do. What do you think, Equalizer? This could be a chance for him to gain some more in the points championship against you. Yes, it is. You know, Equalizer's been running real good tonight. He's laid down a real good straight run, a fast run, one of the fastest ones of the night. So he, he might do real well. But then again, one of the underdog, uh, one of the underdog trucks might come up and knock him out early too. Well, good luck, team. We'll see you next week on Tough Track. All right, thank you, Chris. Andy Brass definitely put everything in perspective. This track has become a great equalizer. The one thing Bob Chandler and Everett Jasper can't plan for when they're putting these huge state-of-the-art trucks together is a track like this. It's wide open tonight. It'll be nightlife against equalizer when we go to the quarterfinal round of competition. Then we're going to see Rambo coming out against USA One, the rematch as USA One back as the second fast loser. The outlaw will take on our fastest loser, the Carolina Crusher. Then the Auto Value King Crunch will come out to take on the Thunder Chicken. There's absolutely no doubt it's anybody's night. We'll find out who's in just a minute. What? The superstars of monster truck racing going to war in a beautiful part of the country tonight in West Lebanon, New York, Lebanon Valley Speedway. And well, you can tell the fans are into it, and I'm going to tell you, these monster truck racers are flat into it because right now, nobody knows what's going to happen. You know, Army, sometimes I think some of the big guns, the big foots of the USA ones, look over at the other lane and say, no problem, I got this guy covered. But everybody has seen Bigfoot have his problems, USA one have his problems, and tonight it truly is a wide open race. This could be the kind of a night or an upstart like a Rambo or somebody you don't expect to make it to the finals and maybe even take the whole thing. This is a classic example of the equalizing factor being Mother Nature, but the equalizer team has figured it out. And why Sorg didn't run a bad run, we're looking at his time, he turned a good time, 
This kid out of Tennessee just will not be intimidated by anything. Gary Cook with a good track under him, he's going to the next round. Absolutely, the victory goes to Greg Holbrook and the equalizer Chevrolet. If we watch it again on the replay, keep in mind that for some reason, while the other big gun trucks are having their problems, equalizer is shooting straight as an arrow. Here's Holbrook with arms. Greg, hold look, I think we're talking slick out there tonight. Yeah, it's drying up some more trucks run over them to dry out. The first set of cars on the left side throwing you over to the left because of the track bench landed. We've been coming to compensate for that and it's been working real good. So the equalizer looking strong at West Lebanon. Now a guy who didn't look strong in that last run, Dave Wysorek, ended up sideways. Well, you can see him wipe the brow. Chris Chappell's going to go over and talk to Dave right now. Chris? I got a little crooked, and I backed off. When I backed off, I started sliding. It was like this hang on. Is the track, do you think, getting worse? We've heard that it was coming around, getting better. Well, not really. As long as you stay on the main track, it's not so bad. But I tried to crack, and I started to slide a little bit. And then when I got on the car, my front wheels were still turned. and just swung the and right around. What was going through your mind when that was happening? Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> just hold on. He held on, and the truck's okay for Dave White's Oregon Nightlife, but it is a defeat for the Chevrolet out of Nebraska. Well, this is not deja vu, not a replay, but they're going to go side by side for the third time tonight. They wind up this way in qualifying. Then in the first round, you'll remember, Rambo beat USA 1 when the two trucks collided at the end of the track. So I guess it's kind of poetic justice that they'll meet again to settle it. Here they go. Now, Wilkie used his head on that run. He did not use his horsepower. He used his head, and he's going to the next round. That's the trick. Boy, they both really got up on their side. However, both trucks pulled it back down. And you talk about using his head, Army. Indeed, I think I from Catawissa, Pennsylvania. Remember, Andy Brad, he was put on a trailer by a thunder kick, and he kept talking about being down on horsepower. Gus Stevens has the horsepower, but he's going to bypass it and use it right. First to third, Scott, just like you said earlier, he's sticking on... Then he tapes his foot to the gas pedal. Well, put the tape on backwards, so it's tacky. Because it's so muddy here, Scott has put, they tape, put the tape on backwards to make it what? Just so, so you know, he's not going to let you get away. You're going to have to drive hard is what he's telling you. Yeah, our foot was slipping off the gas pedal in qualifying. You know, we thought it was a tranny. We were, after we were kind of watching videos, we figured out my foot just slipped off the gas pedal. And now we put the tape on backwards so my foot sticks to the gas pedal. And, we won two rounds with it, so that's what we're going to do the rest of the night. Everybody that's ever raced knows about 200 mile an hour tape. There's another use for it. Thanks, Army. Chris Chapman is over with Kim Rarick, who's got nothing to be ashamed of. He beat foot and he pushed King Crunch. Got to hand it to you. Spectacular run. That's as fast as that little thing will go. I have a small motor here. I'm not trying to make any excuses, but uh, if I had a little bit more horsepower, I'd, I know I can drive. I just can't get him with a little small motor. I only got beaten by four-tenths of a second at about what, four-tenths of a second. How do you feel about that? I knew it was close. I was in there pushing. It was about going through the floor. So Kid Rarick gives it a great run, but the Thunder Chicken's on the trailer for this night at Lebanon Valley Speedway. We're down to the final four. Here's the way they'll stack up. Look at this Chevrolet showdown. Equalizer against USA 1. And then the Carolina Crusher takes on the Auto Value King Crunch. That's coming up next. Back on Tough Track, Scott Douglas, Army Armstrong, and Chris Chapman as we go to the semifinals. Army, kind of the story of the night, has been the upstart, the underdog, taking advantage of these track conditions because it was so slick earlier. You know, they're lucky to even be able to race tonight. We had some upsets in the first couple of rounds, but look in the final four. You got four of the biggest guns going. Equalizer, USA 1, Carolina Crusher, and the Auto Value King Crunch. Well, two of the trucks have had that second chance. That's the Carolina Crusher and the USA 1. They do not, I repeat, do not not want to make that second mistake. If they do this time, they're going into the box just like Bigfoot. But look who comes out now. You talk about a dream race for the Chevrolet people. Equalizer and USA 1. The kid out of Tennessee has got USA 1 covered. Wilkie never tried to come back on him. God, do you believe that? I want to see the replay. Army mean, looks a little squirrely again. He can't seem to keep that truck straight on this track. The right lane like skipping a rock when you're a kid on a pond. If it goes straight, it goes straight. If you get a little bit of trouble, that's it. 
equalizer with the victory over USA 1. We're going to get a look at the replay, and you'll see exactly what Army was talking about in terms of that lane. Wilkie just gets a little bit off, and there's no correcting it, apparently, once you're in trouble on that lane. I want you to try to steer back and kill horsepower. The guy that goes straight goes to the final will be the blue truck side. That's the equalizer. Here's Greg Holbrook with Army. Greg, right now, everything's looking good. You're going to the final, but I noticed Steve Wilkie is still working the crowd. What's with this guy? I don't know. He's always real good to the crowd. He's a real good person to work with. Our truck's working real good in this lane tonight, and I believe he's going to equalize the win in the final. You talk about working the crowd. Wilkie did have them all 10 USA 1, USA 1, but the winner is the equalizer truck, and now Wilkie is headed back toward the pit area. Chris Chapman will probably get a word with him in a second, but let's take another look at the replay, Army, uh, between this race, because certainly we focus on USA 1's problems, but this is an outstanding shot by the equalizer. You know, this is a battle of two different philosophies. Look how quiet and reserved Holbrook is. On the other side of the coin, you've got a USA 1 driver that pounds nails with his fist to get pumped up, but they both go head-to-head. -head. Talking about it, and you're talking about Steve Wilkie. If we look at Greg Holbrook, Chris has tracked down Steve Wilkie, and is going to get a chance to talk to the driver of USA 1 right now. Steve, you were kind of slow off the line. Were you trying a different strategy? Yeah, Chris, I was trying not to spin coming off the line, uh, get some more momentum, then hammer it, drive it over the cars, uh, more or less like I did in that second qualifying pass, and uh, come off the cars and powered it, and I was catching them, and uh, it, she just drove herself around the mid-range again. That's the story from the USA 1 camp. Steve Wilkie, a real roller coaster ride tonight, had his ups and downs, and he ends up a little bit short, losing in the semifinals. Scott, you just said ups and downs. That may be a little bit wrong. It's been left and right all night long. The right lane is not the place to be. Who goes into that lane in the semifinal? The Auto Value King Crunch will be over there as he takes on the Carolina Crusher. So what you're telling the Army is you think Crusher's got a decided advantage just on lane short. No, yeah, the Carolina Crusher does. I think Steven's going to have his hands full. Let's find out right now. Good start for Steven. That tractor both is down. Boy, Army, did you call that before it happened? I'll tell you, because Scott Stevens was in great shape after the first set of cars, but then he just got squirrely, like so many other trucks have done over there tonight. Boy, the Crusher almost ended up in the wall at the end of the run. You know, it's almost like the chassis unload. Like I say, I used the, the term earlier, they have a mind of their own. At this point, we've got a perfect heads-up monster race. Now, Stevens is in trouble. Boy, that's a perfect, perfect replay to show you exactly what happened. Who's going to the good lane in the final? Who had quick qualifying time? That's the big dividend that took place earlier tonight. It's going to pay off in just a minute. And remember, we talked about the big story being Crusher's fast qualifying time. What's the track feel like out there? A lot of trucks have gone over them. A lot of slipping and sliding going on. There's only one more race to go, and you're going to be in that race. How do you adjust for it? Well, really, I don't know how I'm going to adjust for it right now. Uh, I'll have Lane Choice, and I'll stay in the left lane, equalizer. He hasn't ran the right lane all right, so I'm going to put him in new territory, and uh, I hope he gets crossed up and I can take the win. Well, you hear the strategy right there. It's very simple. That's what Gary Porter is going to do in the Monster Smash Final. Chris Chapman has caught up with Scott Stevens. Now, again, remember, not a bad night at the office for Scott running without second gear. Chris? Scott, first question I want to ask you is, have you made it all the way to the semifinal round is with no second gear? Yeah, the tranny was working really bad. That time, it, I left probably as hard as I've ever left the line, because I knew Porter was about the toughest out there. He got into high gear a little quick on me, and the truck got crooked. That's all I could do. It's a good run. It didn't hurt no part. Put another transmission in. We'll be ready for next week. Did it scare you when you got crooked out there? No, I'm not on a track like this. I got plenty of room, and as long as I don't get into somebody's way, you know, it'll be all right. Good luck to you. All right, thank you, Chris. The final two, the equalizer, the Carolina Crusher. It'll be the rookie, Greg Holbrook, driving the truck that won the championship a year ago against the old veteran, Gary Porter, in the Carolina Crusher. We have got a dandy Monster Smash Finals coming up in a minute. Army, you got a favorite? That's going to be the old Fox in the house. I'm going to go with the old Fox, Porter. We'll find out in just a minute here on Top Track. Crusher, the champion of the old guard, if you will. The old Lee Springs design out of Wade 
Greensboro, North Carolina, taking on one of the new state-of-the-art style trucks. That, of course, being the coil-over setup that the equalizer runs out of Tennessee. Gary Cook's truck, driven by Greg Holbrook. Army, when we went to the break, you picked Carolina Crusher over the Equalizer. Now, over the last couple of years, Equalizer had Crusher's numbers, so why didn't you make the pick like that? Okay, there were two things in the favor of the Carolina Crusher. Number one, he's got lane choice, and he's got quick qualifying time. That's number two. The only advantage that the Equalizer has is this kid doesn't know any better. He's going to drive that truck right out the back door in order to win it. It could be a toss-up, but the lane is what makes me want to go toward the yellow truck. As you're watching the run of the equalizer here in the final, remember, if Greg Holbrook can come off the first set of cars and then start up the second set in good, straight shape, he may win. Yeah, but this camera angle shows you how wet this lane's getting now, so my lane choice may go out the window right here. Here we go, the monster smash final. Well, uh-oh, equalizer gets the victory. He didn't know he wasn't supposed to win that race. That to him and Gary Cook. That was great. No one handled that lane any better tonight than the rookie just did. Watch Greg Holbrook in the equalizer go straight as an arrow as Army Armstrong fucks your winner, Greg Holbrook, who helped himself greatly in the World Point Spin. Greg, I noticed when he came in, he gave a thumbs up to the guy he just beat. It's kind of good running against a guy like that. You know is this is going to be a good race. Yeah, Gary's always a good run. Me and him run together a lot. It's tough every time you run him. I got stuck up there in the right lane that run because he had passed the qualifier. He just I had to give her all she had. You knew he was going to do that to you, though, going into this thing. Yeah, I knew that. And we was up there looking at it before I had to run, trying to pick out a line to run. Obviously, he picked out the right line and pads his points lead. Remember, Bigfoot was beaten early by Thunder Chicken, so Equalizer now has a 46-point lead. But look at Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher, still very much a player for the World Championship. As we look through the rest of the top ten, note that USA 1 looks like he's poised to reclaim a top five spot as Ray Digger is probably done for the season. But once again, remember, Gary Porter picked up a lot of points on Bigfoot tonight. Chris is with him now. Gary looks like on the start there, you might have been playing a few head games with the rookie driver, Greg Holbrook. I was, you know, wasn't really playing any head games. I was just wanting to make sure I had everything right, ready to go. I knew it was going to be a real close race. You know, I lost out the first round. I was fortunate enough to come back in the bottom bracket as a fast loser. And really losing the first round helped me more than anything, I think, tonight. You have been probably the most consistent truck on this mini-series. Do you feel like you're going to continue? There's a little bit more left of it. So, you know, I got a few more shows of this truck, and uh, I think I got five more races with this truck, and it's sold to a guy in Missouri, and then I'll be bringing my new truck out in August. Tell us about that. Do you think that that's going to help you maybe win the 1990 TNT Points Championship? I think it will. I was hoping the truck would come out early in the spring, but, you know, I've done a tour out west and stayed gone three months and came back. And I hope the new truck is going to be about 2,000 pounds lighter, and it should be a whole lot faster to take the points win at the end. A very fine performance tonight. Congratulations, and we'll see you next week on Tough Track. Okay, thank you. That's got to scare the rest of the competition army to think that Carolina Crusher, if he's right, is going to be much faster and much better when he gets a new truck. Yeah, 2,000 pounds will be like a feather. Boy, he is running this old truck so well. You can see he's just about three-quarters of a length short of the equalizer on that one. Let's look at it one more time. Remember now, three-quarters of a length short with the heavy truck and the old suspension. Hey, that new truck could just be the ticket. What great racing here at West Lebanon. Thank the Army and Chris for another outstanding call of TNT Monster Truck Action here on Tough Track. Tough Track has been brought to you by Z-Rex Antifreeze Coolant. No matter how cold it gets this winter, no matter where you drive, it pays to remember the temperature never drops below Z-Rex. See you next week on Tough Track. Highlights and the lowlights.